Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much, have a great day. Hello, this is Mike with Shaywinds RV Center here to congratulate you on the purchase of your Torque 322 toy hauler. You guys picked a beautiful unit here. I'm here to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A couple things to take into consideration when parking. On your campsite, your awning. You have plenty of room for that to come out. And over here on your off campsite, your slide. Get a good eye for that, see how much room you need for that to come in and out unimpeded and leave yourself a nice walking path here. I also want you to think about where your power and water connection is going to be. Your power is going to be behind the rear tires on your off camp side. And your power, excuse me, your water connections are all over here on your camp side. So park accordingly so you can utilize facilities at the campsite. Once you arrive, unhook your hitch. First thing we're going to do is level your unit. Our unit does come. Power tongue jack with a docking light should you arrive at night. Set to retract, to lower, extend to raise. Should you lose power, you have a manual override right here that your hand crank will fit on. Bring this up and down. Hand crank. Should be right here in your storage. Got a couple of them right there. Speaking of power, check your battery posts when you arrive. Make sure those have not wiggle loose. Once you got our unit level, next thing you're gonna do is stabilize it. You're gonna come to power, power stabilizing jacks. It's gonna hit extend. And as you see, sometimes one side will come down before the other. Sometimes they'll come down together. They have a mind of their own. But once one comes down, the other does. I'm going to mention stabilizing jack pads. Jack pads are going to protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt, debris, hot black top in the summer. Sometimes you have to adjust those feet. Um, run these down on top of your stabilizing jacks just until they're taut. So right there, once you feel any resistance, once you know your unit's all the way stable, that's how far you're going to want to run down. So you got those in the front. Got another set of these in the rear. Won't run these all the way down, but I'll just show you that they work. Once you got our unit level and stable, we can hook up our power and water. Come around to your off camp side over here. Your power connect. 50 amp cord. Should you need to plug into a 30 amp, and your convenience pack is this 30 to 110 dog, or 30 to 50 to 30 dog bone and if you need to plug in a home here's a 30 amp to 110 to plug in on here just remember running run appliances accordingly when running off 110 you don't want to be popping breakers got our power hooked up go ahead and hook up our water here's over on the campsite the city water connect and your potable water and at the campsite we're going to do city water connect first and foremost your water pressure regulator this water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines of your unit. I always use this when putting fluid into your unit here. Hook that up. Hook up your hose, but don't turn our hose on yet. We're going to come down here next to your door to your hot water heater. We're going to open that up. This door should lift right off here. It does. We're going to open that up and make sure our drain plugs back in. Um, once that's in there nice and tight, you can go ahead and turn on your hose, go inside, open up your hot water tap, 
Once the air is out of the lines and water's coming through, it won't be hot yet, but once water's coming through, you can shut that off and go ahead and turn on your hot water heater from indoors. Now there is an electric element right here. The only time you ever want to turn this on is if you're plugged into 110. Turn it on here as well as electric indoors. Hot water heater doesn't seem to be working. Come up here to your pressure, your reset valves. If them are popped out, press it back in. Then you have your pressure release valve. So let's say we're gonna go camping. We're not gonna use city water. We're gonna use potable water. Right next to your city water is your potable. So if you fill this up with a hose, no need for a water pressure regulator. Two ways to tell when it's full. One, there's an overflow valve here. Or two, on the inside, when you hold your fresh tank button down, you can tell when your fresh tank is full. Just remember, when using potable water is when you go on to turn on your water pump. Don't use your water pump when using city water, it's already pressurized. All right, we're all set up to camp. Let me walk you around the rest of the unit. Let's start right here. We have two black tank flushes for dumping out our sewers. There's a uh, quick connect there. 110. Here's your outdoor kitchen. Simply lift that and pull it out. You have a big long hose. You pull this down. Hook up to your quick connect. You also have a television out here. Turn that on. That's right, coming on. We'll set this back up in there. Store, store that hose away. There's your TV. Electric fridge, again, your hot water heater. This is a flue for your furnace. If you run your furnace, steer clear of this. It'll get rather warm. Stabilizing jacks, your pass-through storage. With all your hitch work in here. Turn this light on so you can see the battery disconnect. This will disconnect all the battery power to the unit. That'll come in important later when I talk about your carbon monoxide propane detector. Come to the front here. Took, took the cover off your propane here. See this on your regulator? Simply point it toward the tank you wish to be using. Lefty Lucy to open. Again, check your battery post. Your docking lights here. This is not storage. This is pre-prepped for a generator. Solar panel. You can plug in a solar panel here and that'll trickle charge your batteries. Fueling station. One of your black tank dumps. These are access to the back of the fridge. Your second dump back here. Here's your plug-in cable and satellite. Here's your fueling station. Your switch for turning your fueling station on and off. And your handle with pump is in here. Your ladder. Remove these cotter pins. This ladder will shift out. Go up there and utilize it. Go up there and check your seams of your roof a couple times a year and caulk it as, as needed. You'll move this unit here in a minute and open up your patio here your ramp this is a vent that you can push out from indoors in case you have fuel smell inside your garage that hand crank right there is for your spare tire well that about covers everything on the outside let's go take a look inside your unit First thing I like to point out when coming into a unit is the fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone that's camp with you knows that the fire extinguisher is located at the entry doorway in case of an emergency. Coming to the right as you come in. Control panel. There's your new battery. There's your fresh, black, and gray tanks. Here's where you turn on your water pump if you're using potable water. Here's where you turn on your water heater if you're using gas. These are all your cabin lights. Cap light, porch light, auxiliary lights, your awning. I'm finished running that the rest of the way out. Just to show you, you want to run that awning out just so that flap falls down to 90 degrees. 
you can see that bar once you do you know you're out far enough that will extend past it so be careful when you run it out all right johnny comes the rest of the way back in down below that is your thermostat let's start by turning that on to air AC kicked on. I'll shut the AC off and turn it on to furnace. You notice the AC will come on rather or shut off rather quickly. Furnace kicked on. But now when you shut the furnace off, it takes a few minutes for the few for the furnace fan to shut off. And below that, access panel to your breaker box and fuses. Looks like you got a ton of 15s in there. I'd recommend having a handful of those with you when you go camping. Coming around into your kitchen here. Down inside here is your 12 volt carbon oxide propane detector. Now the reason I mention this 12 volt, it's always running off your battery. So if you're gonna be gone for the day, nothing plugged in, charging your battery, use your battery disconnect to keep this from running your battery down. TV and sound system. Remotes are in here. I'll bring the one from outside and put it in here as well. Building from How's your the TV working? It's going to be a beautiful day today. Great day to come pick up camper. JBL sound system. Three zones on this. Indoors, outdoors, or the garage. See if I can get it off Bluetooth. Switch our modes here to FM. And shut that off. Self-explanatory microwave. There's a two-speed vent. One, two, and a light. This glass top here makes an excellent backsplash. Turn on your panel light. Turn this to light. It'll go from blue to red. Hit your spark and there's your flame. Same thing in the oven. Turn this to light. Hit your spark here, no need for a pilot anymore, then just set it to the desired temperature. Oven light as well. One tens everywhere. A lot of individual lighting. Accent lighting for up there. Your Dometic fridge. Open that up. Up here in the top, this is where you turn it on. Auto means. When you're plugged in, you're running out of electricity. As soon as you unplug, you'll switch to gas. Or lift up on this button, now you're strictly gas. That light comes on, check your gas. Of course, those two slots right there are for those two bars. You can set that table up there. The accent lighting. I'm missing some light in there. Come back in your bathroom. I'm turning turn them back in. Shut all my lights off. There we go, cabin lights. Coming into your bathroom. So I mentioned here is where your 110 with GFCI resets at. Lighting, fan, open, close, on and off. How much to talk about in your bedroom? If you do decide to hook up a generator, you can start it right here. From the inside. Hand crank open, exhaust vent here. And prep for a TV in here as well. Do you have your storage underneath the bed? Let's go to your garage. So you get the bunk system. Over here, your controls, you do have your separate thermostat for back here. Crank that AC on, shut that AC off. Your lighting, also prep for a TV back here. 110 and cable as well.
the AC to shut off. We also have a fire extinguisher back here. There's the AC shut off. Now let me go ahead and turn your furnace on real quick. There that goes. And shut that off. All right, coming around your garage back here. I'll show you how your bed works. Bed down. As you bring your bed down, that will stop at a certain point. Top bunk, and then your bottom bed bunks come down. Gonna stop right there. I'm not going to bring it all the way down. I'm just going to show you real quick. Move this over. How to bring your beds up. If you use the bed for a bed, you're going to want to lower these metal bars up underneath here for support. Otherwise, pull on that and roll this forward. And that's how the, that seating will set down. Just remember to pull this back because that's back it'll flip up and so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how to bring down just the bottom and leave the top bunk up Tons of tie downs in here. Again, you have that rug up there. You also have a table that you can set up in between the seating here to eat. So once it's all the way up in your drawer here, cotter pins you grab those what we're gonna do is we're gonna push them in right here and all four corners back one's a little harder to see but if you feel you can find it there's that one See this corner, I know you're not seeing much right now, but so again, once you got your cotter pins in, when you bring it down, you see the top bunk stays. All right, I'm gonna run this back up, I'll leave them in there. here that's like we're gonna leave the campsite first thing I like to do is shut off all my lights then I can see which individual lights I need to go through and shut off in different rooms accent lighting up here accent lighting over here is all off stove light now once I've seen a shut off all of our lights I'll come back over here and turn on my cabin lights and bring our slide in make sure nothing's in the way of impeding this slide from coming in our doors and drawers are closed and just that quickly our slides in Show off our cabin lights. Come out of the unit. Lock and deadbolt your exterior door. You don't want the horror story of your door coming open as you come down the road. Unhook our water and cable. Once our water and cable is unhooked, we're gonna come to this pressure release valve. 
Lift up on that, it's gonna drain all your water out of there. Once that's done, drop that down and pull your drain plug. Be sure to put your door back on here. Now just below your hot water here, we're gonna go ahead and pull those low point drains, open them up and drain. We're gonna bring up all of our stabilizing jacks. Unhook our power, hook up our hitch, and head on up to the dump station. At the dump station, take your sewage hose, plug it in right here, and pull this black handle. Now, once that's drained, you're gonna close that one, come up to this one, hook up. Go down there, pull that black handle, that's gonna be your sewages. Once that's done, you can go ahead and pull your gray handle. It's gonna be a cleaner water, it's your sinks and your showers. It'll clean your sewage hose out for you. So you can conveniently store it in a, in a uh, sanitary place. Which I think we got, no, no storage on this one. And head on home, again. Thank you so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this torque for many years to come. Happy camping.